Oh, well, hello there, and welcome to Leg Play, which is what I call this show when I'm all on my own. Just a singular leg, no other friends around, which is kind of ironic because I'm playing golf with your friends, but without your friends. I guess this is golf without your friends at this point. Although I'm not even really playing golf. I, I thought I'd do something a little bit different. We had a gap in the, the schedule. I didn't have time to record with the, the, the other guys that I normally do. So I thought I'd do something special, go into the uh, the level editor and, and show people around that. I'm working on a level currently, and I thought this would be neat to not only show you what I'm working on, so you get a little preview of coming attractions, maybe you could see how I work when I, when I make these levels, and I could also serve as a little bit of a tutorial for those of you who want to know how to make your own levels and everything, because I know a fair bit about this. And then I've also got some questions from the uh, patrons over on the Discord. I asked them, I'm like, ah, I'm doing a Q&A. So when, when, um, if I run out of things to say here, then I have those as a backup. So we'll see. This is tutorial slash Q&A slash just hanging out. Just a bunch of people hanging out. Now for those of you who do want the tutorial, I guess I should start off with the, with the very basics because this is kind of weird. The controls for the, 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 the level creator are inherently much different than the controls for golf. Because you don't, you don't move in golf. But yeah, you, if you want to move around here, you got WASD. It's just like a first person shooter. Except the mouse doesn't turn on its own. You've got, because you, you need to be able to click on things. And that, it's really easy when the mouse doesn't make your, your camera tilt. So if you want to go, if you want to actually look around, you've got to hold down the right click. Hold down the right click makes it work like a uh, like a first person shooter. And then to go up and down, it's actually Q to go down and E to go up. You'd think it would be spacebar, but no, it's Q and E. And E is usually like the, the use function, but no, you just you just click on things. And I guess the first thing I, I should tell people, like right off the bat, well I guess you've got the stuff up here, you want to select stuff. But uh, the first thing you want to do, like if you place something. You want to go over here and click this snap function. This this snap will just like make everything... I remember the first time I played this, I didn't understand what the snap function was or what it did. And trying to make a golf course without it is super difficult. Basically, it snaps things to a grid. And you can see it. there's the one right next to it. So now that I have this here, I can move it left and right and it moves in increments of one. And you can see there's the X, Y, and Z coordinate. So I move it left and right, and the Z coordinate goes there. You move it up and down with this arrow, and the Y coordinate goes down. You can go below the map. That's negative. And then the, the X coordinate, which is this way. So you've got those three, and of course you can, if you want something to be specific, you can be like seven or whatever. If you want everything to be the exact same height, you can always just input it manually. And if you turn snap off... You can actually move by decimal points to very small incremental amounts, which can make this uh, really difficult to line things up when you put Snap on significantly easier. Now, of course, the thing about Snap is that it doesn't have to just snap to one. If you want to, you can, like, snap by five, and then, like, every time you move it... Oh, oops, I didn't turn Snap on. That would be good. One second. Let me just type that in. There you go. Snap by five. And then when you drag it, it moves by increments of 5. Which is not really all that useful when you're trying to move things. But there's these these other these other two ones. This one is uh, changing the shape of stuff. So again, you've got like the X coordinate. If you wanted to make this really long, you put the X to 5. There you go. You gotta build it really long. Set the Y to 5. Nothing. Because there's no... This is a flat piece. It doesn't It doesn't go up. I think it might affect something, I don't know, you'd have to ask Stoic Steve, he's messed with this. But yeah, the Z. And there you go, that's how you get bigger things. And you can use these to like, drag them and stretch them and stuff like that, but... Sometimes, especially if things get tilted, it's hard to know what... What shape does what. And in the case of, uh, let's see here... Um, this. So say you have something like this, not only does this, uh, allow you to like, make it bigger, but say you want to mirror it, you want it to go the other way. Well, if you go negative on the z-axis, it basically reverses the way it looks. And of course, you could also do stuff, well, let's make it regular again. Like, type in, like, 0 0.5. And make it, like, really thin. I guess that's not a good example, but, like, you, yeah, you, you get the point. 
You can make things, like, slightly smaller without going to zero. 0 0.90. And just make it, like, yeah. So there's a lot of neat things you could do with that. And then, of course, this last one over here is the, the rotate. Which is the most confusing, because I don't, I can't get the X and the Y uh, and the Z. I don't know, I usually have to look at these, these, uh, these little circular ones. You gotta go until you find the one that's, like, highlights in yellow. That's how you know you're on the right one. So this one spins it. But of course the snap on this isn't very useful because moving by one degree is like really weird. And also the floors are like transparent on the bottom. So you can make invisible wall. That's if you ever see something with invisible walls, that's how that's how you do it. You just make them so you can only see them from one angle. But yeah, what I usually do if I want to do something like this is I get the snap and I turn it to like 45. Because a 45 degree angle will get you like eight directions. Like there it's perfectly on its uh, diagonal. Now it's perfectly straight. That. And you can just rotate it that. And then if you need more than that, I'd suggest uh, 15. 15 kind of puts a little bit in between. So now you're at 45. It's three turns to get perfectly diagonal. And it gives you some more options in what you want to do. But yeah, so that's that's really the basics of it. Using that, you can, you can make everything here. You've got floors, which again are usually one-way floors, and then also some other uh, surfaces and stuff like these tunnels. And if you want to delete something, you just hit the delete key. Make sure you save. You got floors, and then you've got all the different themes, the different kinds of levels that exist will get you different colored floors. Some of them have access to different shapes and stuff, which is kind of annoying. You'd think they'd make, like, some things universal, but sadly they're not. But mostly it's just different colors. Um, you've got walls, which includes these little, like, things you can put on the side of the floors to, like, keep the, uh... They tend to be raised just like ever so slightly by default if they're on the same the same Y coordinate. So like this on a 4 and this on a 4, the the sidebar will be resting on top of it so that your ball won't won't go off of things. And then you can also put like these walls and some walls, you know, they work they they they're they're uh what's it what's it called? The opposite of transparent. They're the opposite of transparent both ways. And some walls, I believe, are... They're like one-way walls. Maybe I'm just dumb. I don't know. Either way, you got the walls, you've got the floors. Some of these things, like this apparently counts as a wall, but it looks kind of like a floor to me. I don't know. And you got scenery. Scenery is like different things you see. Skulls, whatever. You can make them bigger, you can rotate them around, you can make them smaller. You want like a teeny tiny skull, let's just like 0 0.25. 0 0.25. <laughs> 0 0.25. There you go. One skull, a fourth of the shape. You're welcome. Let's delete that. And yeah, these are, yeah, you know, some of them you can use as hazards. Uh, whether or not they have hit boxes like whether balls will bounce off of them or in the case of some of these like um i'm not familiar with this one because i haven't made a level but um this so something like this like this box the the ball will bounce off of all sides of it and it'll even bounce and rest on the top but if your ball ends like it's shot on top of this it just resets the stroke it counts it as like being out of bounds so you've got to put like one of these on top of it if you want to golf on top of this. But some things aren't like that. It, it really depends from, from object to object. You kind of have to experiment. Like these houses, I'm pretty sure you can... Oh wait, no, you can't golf on top of the houses. I remember that because my level, I had to put stuff on top of them. And of course, the only way to experiment, once you've, you've moved stuff around or whatever, you can, um, you can play your level. Well, I guess I should show you... A There's a couple more things you probably need to know. There's the scenery... Features, which are usually just moving scenery. Uh, most of them are in the forest because that was like the original level. So if like you want this turny thing, there you go. You got yourself a turny thing. And then game, game features. So you click on this, this is your hole. 
It just spawns them one after another. I've done 13 holes already, so it just spawns 14. And this shows the way you're going to be facing when you start, the little arrow or whatever. And then if you want to play, you can choose what hole to start on. You start on 14. Yeah, the, the level's called Tricky Jumps, but for some reason the word trick um, doesn't count. Yeah, and because I spawned out in the open, I guess I gotta move that somewhere else. But because I spawned it out here in, like, the grass box, which is just the default, it just put me in the, the first hole. Usually want it to spawn over something. But yeah, you wanna you put those over something, and then you've got various flags, and these little green parts, these are the, uh, whatchamacallits? These are the goals. So if your ball touches a green part, this little cube or whatever, then your, I guess some people might call this yellow, whatever. If they touch that, then it ends the hole and tells the game to send them to the next hole. So the flags by default have them there and you want to put the flags like, you know, inside a cup. There's usually a, a, a level like that. There you go. There's usually a, a uh, there's a bunch of different text pieces that have cups on them. But any, a hole could be anywhere. There you go. And you usually want to lower it so that that's below. That way, like if you have it up here, then if they just pass through the outside of the hole, they it counts. You want it to put it down below so that when they go in, they land in it. And that's the only way to, to access it. But yeah, you don't necessarily have to make that the, the hole. You've got a bunch of different flags. They've also got this... Uh, goalie, where getting it inside the net counts as the goal. The uh, basketball hoop, where you can see there's a square section inside of it. And if you want, you could just you could just make a shape or whatever. If you want your hole to be like some huge thing, like say you want to make it so, um, where was that at? You know, you want to be like ah, get inside the dinosaur mouth and then you win. You can, you can, uh, if I can get on the thing, I think most people already get the idea and I'm just like wasting time, but yeah, you can, you know, fill up his mouth with this, make it as big and as bold as you want. And then by going into it or by passing through this wall, essentially they, they, they get into it. It counts as being in a hole. And then these are waters. Um, these are like. Oh yeah, that's just a goal bar, essentially. And most of the waters, if you if you end your shot, like, in them, you, uh, it, it resets your ball. I think you could travel through them briefly. I don't know, I've never messed with water, really. Lava, I know, that, like, if you touch lava and you don't get into a hole within, like, two seconds, then you're just, you're, it, it just resets your ball. So this is a good way to have, like, an out-of-bounds area. But if you want an out-of-bounds area without having lava there, um, you do it with this this weird transparent blue box. This is basically like, if your ball touches this area, it is tagged as being out-of-bounds. And then, unless it goes into a hole like immediately afterwards, it just resets your ball. And that's what I have on the floor here. I've stretched one of them out to cover this. Because the idea with this hole is like you're trying to aim to get into the portals. And I want to make it so that if you land on the floor, it resets you. If you don't put these here, then you just golf from the, the hole and the hole becomes impossible. Because there's no way to, to get into things. And yeah, I guess now that I've, I've showed you like pretty much all the different parts. I would save. And then you can play by pressing this. And so what I've done is start in these tubes. I'm going for like a portal kind of aesthetic. The free cam doesn't work in here for whatever reason. And every hole, instead of golfing to get into a, a traditional hole, you're trying to get into this, this portal. And just, uh, I'll show you, like, you know, you go off, you land here. What it'll do is just reset you back. And if you land in the hole, that teleports you over here. And you'll see it counted as the, the par got. And I plan to, to do something a little better uh, eventually with that. Who knows, maybe I'll, I'll work on that here. But what I've got here is a exit portal. And 
a, like, you finish the hole, like one of those circles, just over this pipe. And eventually I'm going to surround this pipe with a whole bunch of scenery and stuff so that it looks like you're back in, uh, like, behind some kind of machinery. And I'm going to put things that, like, push you through the pipes and everything really fast. So it looks like you're going back, and then when it starts you up again, you come out of the pipes that are going into the walls. So it always seems like you're being pushed through the tubes and coming out, but in reality, they're not, they're not attached at all. This is just going to... I'm not sure how long I have to make this. It depends how long the, uh, the aftershot camera lasts and whatnot. But yeah, and there's... That's pretty much the level. I called it Tricky Jumps because I wanted it to be getting on to different... I, I really like having to make jumps. It's one of those things that you can do in online mini golf that you don't really see a lot in regular golf courses. Like just jumps in general because having to get your ball after the fact would be a hassle. So I decided to make it this this portal type course where you go through all these different different things and the different themes where it gradually gets harder. And I figured rather than trying to land into a tiny hole, it'd be better to hit something slightly bigger, which is why I came up with the the portal the the actual portals. I actually made the laboratory idea after I decided. Originally it was just in the grass. I feel it realized it, uh, it didn't match very well. But yeah, I guess before I get into my, my Q&A stuff then, I should go, I'll go ahead and just go get, give you a run through of the level as it exists so far. Mostly because as far as my design philosophy, I really like it when levels have like a unified theme and they slowly get, I like variations on a theme. I like the idea that you slowly get the same thing, but more difficult. So whenever I come in to work on uh, the map, which I do like pretty much once or twice a week, usually while I'm editing. If I'm editing a legs play, which doesn't take a whole lot of uh, cuts and stuff, then I can play this on one monitor while I keep track of the footage on the other one. And I, the first thing I do is I always come by and run through the course so I remember what it's like to go from hole to hole and sort of like what the feeling of the course is. And also to make sure that like, everything works and isn't broken. The more you can test it, the the better. Granted, I probably test too much, because every time I make a new hole, like you can test the individual holes, and I do when I try to make them, but whenever I add one and I'm like, okay, I think it's done, I always make sure to go through everything that already exists first. Boing. Yeah, these first ones are pretty easy. Especially if you know what you're doing. But I tried to make it a little bit more difficult. It's not always, uh, my, my first level was always full power. It was just different ways to use it. Now you see I've staggered things. I've lifted them up. I've tilted them a little bit more. So there's a little bit more subtlety to what you've got to do. As a result, I can't hole in one everything all the time. <laughs> Almost though. There we go. Yeah, just try to make it slightly more difficult. But you get that first room. I also like the idea that, like, you know, you have these little, like, chambers, and in every chamber there's, like, one hole that you're accessing from different ways. With different themes, this one being the these ramps that go up the walls, where you have to sort of slide along things. You got that really basic one where you just do it there. And it's like, oh, it's a, little, it's a little trickier. I wish I could do the free cam, but that doesn't work in the uh, in the the editor for whatever reason. Oops. Yeah, this one requires a little bit more bouncing, a little bit more bouncery. There we go. Yeah, hopefully, I mean, Steve might watch this. I don't know. Comment in the comments if you watch this, Stoic Steve. Worried my friends might figure out how to beat all the courses and everything. Because that, that is the one benefit of having played these a million times, is that I know like exactly how to do them. Although I do test when I make them, I try them in a bunch of different ways to see how many alternative solutions there are. I like the sort of golf as puzzle. Trial and error. Unless you got like really good uh, perspective really good at judging loops 
Yeah, and then course three is um these these like half pipes that loop back and it's behind you and slightly to the right. There you go, the camera's kind of like difficult to see. Yeah, and it stops there. There is I guess I could show that on the editor real quick once we get there. Or once we get back. Um uh, it's right about here. Nope. Yeah, this time you start right, right below it. If I zoom out, yeah. So, distinctly not going to be able to go full power on this one. You need to, like, hit the the ramp at its zenith and then fall down. There we go. A nice little tricky shot. <laughs> I mean, I, th I, I like it. Maybe it's just me. I mean, hard to say. Um, whoop. Yeah, and that's... I, I guess I'll show you that. It's With this one, you've got to bounce it and then go over there. There's actually one of those invisible walls over the other course. So that if you happen to land there, you don't just end up redoing the, the same course you did before. I think I'm hitting it too hard. I forget, this one's changed a lot. I remember the last time I played this, I came in here expecting to start a new one, and then I got like a, a par like 15 on this, and I was like, this hole is way too difficult. And I had to, I had to change it significantly. Huh. That's the only problem, like I feel like I should have gotten into that one. Let's try this. Yeah, so that should reset me. Yep, there we go. Nope, not quite. Maybe this one is still too difficult. Maybe I'll have to come back to this one again. Okay, so I gotta hit harder than that. Yoink. Yeah, it's, I always feel like I have consistent bounces, and then I get them not quite. It really depends on where you hit these things. I don't know, maybe I should replace this this uh, bouncy pit with... Uh, oh, okay. Only 11 strokes! <laughs> yeah, I might have to change that one. That seems like one that like the other guys... And then here's where you start getting multiple jumps, which looks more trippy than it should be. Because I haven't, like, put in all the walls and everything that are going to be there. There's a lot of floating platforms where I won't want that to be the case at the final level. But I tend to do the, um... I tend to do the scenery later, as evidenced by this thing still being just a tube in the middle of nowhere. Although it depends what I'm working on. Sometimes, like, you know, I'm editing or something and I just don't feel like uh, creating stuff. I don't have any ideas for holes, so instead I just go back and, like, fill in these walls. Make things look nice. There you go. Is that... Yep, and there's hole 13. So that's, that's all I've gotten so far. The other one was... And yeah, you can see I made another one of these smaller and put it here. Just in case, like, if you ramped off this and landed... If you ramped on this hole trying to get here, or bounced off of this one, you couldn't then land on this hole and get it in. It would reset you. Although what the in-universe explanation for that is, I don't know. That's like, I have the inverse- I have the in-universe explanation with, like, the balls coming out of the tubes and everything. But, uh, I don't explain how you get off the floor. I've been considering maybe having something like, oh yeah, that's what I was going to show you. There's, um, I believe it's a feature. No, the feature's in the, the volcano. That's how you get the portals. And there's all the different styles of portals in and out. You can have multiple in portals that go to the same out. Um, what is this? <coughs> this is, okay, this is the gravity shift. I believe the space station is the one that has the directional. Or is this gravity shift volume? I think it's this. It's hard to tell. 
some of their their tools were like clearly not made with uh people in mind <laughs> with like amateurs in mind this whole course creator is kind of like half easy to use and half like really could use a tutorial which is part of the reason why I wanted to make this but yeah this if I'm not mistaken this will like zoom you through things in the direction that it's pointing so if I put it in there let's go ahead and just test that out real quick so if I go into this hole yeah it adds a little bit of speed that's how you get uh, things to zoom through like the tubes is you put these uh, these traveling spaces I believe if you make these like smaller like one one uh, one yeah you can't really like see them all that well Let's go ahead and try that. Let's see if that still works as like a one by one by one thing. Lots of trial and error. No, it doesn't seem to. Yeah, I know there's a way, like, if you're you're worried about them being, like, visible, you could do that. But yeah, that's what I plan to do is put a bunch of those over here so that when you go through this, you start zooming through the pipe really fast. And maybe it goes into, like, a loop or does something crazy and there's a whole bunch of pipes everywhere else and stuff. But I was also thinking about, like, you land on the floor and you could just have these everywhere, like, going towards the back end and have, like, a wall of tubes along that end or something. I don't know. I'll have to see. It depends. I, I'm kind of on a time limit with this where I have to make it, I think, before next week. Otherwise, Steve's going to have, like, five levels finished. I go much slower than him. And yeah, with a lot of these, like, I, I put, like, a box around this so you could see where the platform is from down here. Because, again, the floors are transparent, so if you're underneath them or behind them, you can't see shit. You kind of need these walls. Um, and this was actually, this was originally the second hole where you had to go from, like, here. Not the second hole, but I did this one where you gotta go, like, boom to there. And it's two, and then I made this one. But it has more of a tilt, so it's not really like the same skill you're using. So I designed the hole and then decided it should be later in the level. And then I made this one that also has a 45 degree... Or not 45, I think this is like a 30 degree tilt. This is a 30 degree tilt and this is like a 45 degree tilt. So they're different kinds of jumps. I figured I'd get you used to the 30 degree and then I'm going to have another hole that's a 45 degree... And then this one with 45 degrees where you've got to hit like three different things. Although what to do in this one, I'm not exactly sure. So that's the thing. I know I need one that has a 45 degree. I'm not sure if I want to come at it from like this side. Or if I want to just put, put walls over there or what. Oh yeah, I should have mentioned this when I was doing the tutorial. This is like the most important thing. If you hold down ALT and click something, you duplicate it. I hope anyone who <laughs> was looking for a tutorial... Yeah, that, that makes things infinitely easier because once you make one of these big walls, you don't have to make one again. You can just click ALT and move it over there. And the snaps make it really easily easy. Same with thing with these, these metallic floors and pretty much everything. So... I think what I'd want to do is come from, I don't know, trying to work out my thought process while I'm talking to people. I'm not sure if that'll work as well as I, I thought. You know, let's just go ahead and fill in some of the, the, uh, the scenery and stuff. And while I'm doing that, I can get to these, these Q&A questions provided by the, the generous patrons. Oh, look, how did I do this over here again? Yeah. Like, if you look at it from this perspective, it looks really weird. But these, these, uh, these 30 degree tilts don't, like, lend themselves very good to, like, walls and stuff. But let's just steal one of these. Nothing has collision when you're moving it around, fortunately. Now, let's see here. So, looking over at, the, I got the Discord in the other window. Crazy Ginger Man asks, how are you today? 
Like, I, I'm alright. I slept in way later than I expected to. I bet it's kind of tough in general when you when you make your own schedule to, like, keep to that schedule. Because it's one of those things, like, I, it's... When, when you work at, like, a, a job job where you, you make a certain amount of uh, money and time and stuff like that... Huh. This doesn't quite fit. Is that because it's... Okay, let's unsnap and just slowly tilt it up until it matches. There we go. Or is it supposed to? Yeah, that's fine. Does it go? Okay. And I guess we should do the same. And yeah, that's generally where you want to turn off snap. But yeah, I was saying when you when you work when you work for yourself. And there's no one, like, marching your time, and you can really do things kind of whenever you feel like it, as far as, again, like, just work goes. The the, the problem you run into is that, um, like, my alarm will go off, and then... Oh, wait, what do I need to... Okay, need to rotate this. Yeah, my alarm will go off at, like, 10 in the morning or whatever, and I'll still be kind of tired... And I'll just look at it and be like, do, what, do I really need to wake up? <laughs> Whatever I do, I can do later in the day. There's literally, like, nothing... There's no time limit to when I have to do stuff, for the most part. So then I'll oftentimes fall back asleep. And usually that's not that big a deal. Because, uh, you know, I'll wake up, like, 20 minutes later or 10 minutes later. But today, I just, for whatever reason, I slept until like 2 in the afternoon, like 2.30. Like almost 3 o'clock by the time I actually woke up. And it's like, well shit, that's gonna throw off my sleep schedule. If I even had one to begin with. It, it, it's one of those times when you're like, I'm not sure if I should just like try to stay up for 24 hours and reset it at this point. Or what. So that's been kind of fucky. And... Um, you know, I'm obviously behind enough that I have to do a, a leg play because I was too busy to record other stuff because of the, the Dark Magician What a Deck, if you're familiar with the Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. I assume most of you are. Comment in the comments if you're not. But yeah, that one, it didn't go very well. It was, uh, oh, I can't even use those. I gotta, I gotta make a different one. All right, well, we'll get to that and when we get to it. Uh, there we go. Yeah, I don't like these, like, transparent from one side only walls. They make me nervous because you can lose them. Oops. Or lose track of them, rather. Let's go ahead and do one of these. Hey. Hey. Yeah, but it seems like it fits, but then you gotta move around and everything. But yeah, so I'm, I'm doing well enough, just uh, just a little off. As as you do. Oh, I gotta turn the snap off again. Oh. Huh. This got really weird. Because I grabbed it by the center. There we go. Yeah, sometimes these are at like point fives or something like that. Uh, let's see, question number three. Here comes the Yu-Gi-Oh! questions. All Yu-Gi-Oh! questions all day. All right. It's uh, Piper Wright, who's also known as Jelly Will Return. They have both on their Discord name. I assume they're fine with me saying both. Otherwise, they wouldn't have it on their public Discord name. Uh, are there any archetypes you would consider unsalvageable, no matter what new support? Uh, no. No, I would not. There was, there was a time when I would have said that for BES, and, you know, I've lost to enough BES decks. They're, they're still not, like, good. They'll, they'll never be, like, meta or anything, but I've lost to enough of them to, to not be, not completely discount them. I would never, I would never put it past Konami to, like, make some custom card level support where they just give whatever like you know dark scorpion gets like eight new cards and just completely changes what the archetype is about 
and it's not even recognizable as Dark, dark Scorpions, but you still play like Don Zalug <laughs> or something. And it's like, well, yep, Dark Scorpions are meta, even though it's essentially just a new t archetype that has Dark Scorpions in the name. Uh, let's see. Did you vote uh, to Tud Sumpha? Tud Sampha? I don't know, man. What do you think I am? Some sort of gib goblin? No. I don't gib or goblin. Uh, he asked, did you vote in the creator card? If so, if what? If so, or if yes, what for? Or for what? What for makes it sound like, why did you even bother? Which could be said about the creator card. <laughs> the Konami, like, custom card initiative. Yep, and I'll have to test all these out afterwards to make sure the hitboxes aren't just, like, barely going through things. You always gotta watch out for that. YOLO. You ought to watch out. Uh, there we go. And then even if you have to move something with the, uh, the snap off, if you copy and paste it, it'll be at, like, roughly the same level. And then, yeah, future ones can just snap on there. It'll still be at kind of the same height. And then for these to keep the same texture, I, like, rotate them upside down. If I can find the blue one, it's really finicky. There we go. And then just like, bam. Now it looks like a thing. Although I really, yeah, this is floating, so I need to... Just kind of arbitrarily decided the height and didn't realize that these were like, slightly off of the ground. Oh well. Such things happen from time to time. Um, let's see. But yeah, what did I vote for? Gradles and, um, uh, Insectors so far. I don't really like the, the Valkyrie play style. They don't really have a lot. I still need to try them, I guess. I just remember reading them, like, once and being like, Wow, is that all they do? They have so much support. And it's just, like, Mischief of the Time Goddess and spam and hope you win. It, there's just, it's just, everything's really xenophobic and it's not really fun. Um, and Zectors, meanwhile, have a really kind of unique play style. And with Gradles, I was really adamant about the Gradles. I was like, Gradles are like a really e splashable archetype with very few cards that would be fun to have more of, I feel like. Um, and whereas Weather, the Weather is just like this very... It's got a lot of support already. It's a very boring, slow-paced kind of deck, and it's very much like, it does its own thing, and it can't really be mixed with anything else. It's like, if we're only gonna get one card, I'd prefer something that can have, like, maximum use. Something that's gonna be used in, like, at least two decks, or could be used in two decks, perhaps. Something that can be combined with other- an archetype that can be combined with other archetypes. That would be cool. And it's like, neither in the case of Insectors- well, I, mean, I, I don't know, Insectors do have kind of some stuff they can do with other insect archetypes, so... There's that. Um, and yeah, we haven't done anything yet that since then. They, they reset it, they reset everything. They reset it, and forget it. Alright, and this is on like the same... level and that looks kind of bad so I'm just gonna like there we go unsnap it and move it until it does that there we are okay okay what's the next one uh, what is your favorite summon mechanic in the game uh, I feel like I have phases where I go through like every every summon mechanic that I like there's times where I really enjoy synchro for whatever reason I still don't know why I like synchro I think I like synchro decks so much because they tend like it's the oldest like summoning mechanic aside from like fusion but fusion is like very specific in what you have to do for it it's just like you two cards use the spell and the only thing you can really do weird with it is like 
Maybe you don't use a spell. Maybe you don't use two cards. Maybe you have to use a specific spell. It's just, it's kind of boring. Or it's kind of samey. Um, as, as opposed to like Synchro, where like you have Crystrons that Synchro during the opponent's turn. Or, um, I guess Synch uh, Crystrons again, where you have like Synchro Tuners. And you have uh, Synchros that require multiple tuners. And there's just a lot of ways you can like mix that up, I feel like. Ritual's probably a close second now that they've done some really weird stuff with like Megalith. They're kind of experimenting with the, the, the ritual space. Although some people argue that like now there's a bunch of monsters that are just like rituals in name only. They're not really rituals if they don't have spells and stuff, you know. At least that's what some people would say. But yeah, with with Ixies, you don't really see like we haven't we haven't seen the like Ixie during your opponent's turn archetype. Or if we have, I can't think of it at the moment. And we haven't seen like the um you know, I mean we 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 have a a monster that links during the opponent's turn in IP Mask Arena, but that's not really like I don't know, maybe we'll get an IP archetype at some point. All the intellectual property, all the time. Hard to say, hard to leg. Okay, and then I'm going to copy this over. Can I select this one? We're gonna move this up. I want it so it just barely doesn't go through try to line it up there we go perfecto it looks close I mean you're never gonna see it from that angle anyway so it's fine it's finish not finish but it's finish so yeah I guess I guess synchro but they're all they're all decent in their own way I, I have things I just like synchro seems to they do the most with it because it's the oldest one it's the one where they they've had the most time to mess around with it and I mean, Pendulum is... It's Pendulum. <laughs> they haven't done much with that either. Um, is this... Just barely, like, above the floor? Hopefully no one will notice. That's just how to do. Um, let's see. Arjan, what archetypes have been released or have received support in the last year and a half you would like to try out in the what -a deck? Patreon request or no? Uh, I don't think there's anything recently... That, that I haven't tried yet that I'd really want to try. Most of the stuff that... I'm trying to think. I don't even know what's coming out. <laughs> now that I think about it. It's like, what's what's really new at the moment? Like, I don't, I don't think... Because uh, I know there's stuff like... Uh, what are they called? There's that weird Chinese-themed archetype where it's, uh, one second, let me see if I can, oh, there we go, oh, that's gonna be on the other side, is this properly themed, there we go, and it just seems to, like, it doesn't have a really, I, I like the, I like the kind of, like, cute gimmicks, I like the, 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 Mar the Melfi, the Melfi is a good example, where, like, every card does kind of the same thing, and they just do different effects when they do the same thing. It, it's neat, it's fun, I enjoy it. Um, and then you have stuff like them where it's, or stuff like the Nemesis, where it's like, I don't really know what you're trying to do. You just seem to like do a bunch of wildly different things. I guess you're kind of themed around banishing and being banished, maybe? I don't know, I don't really get it. I guess Nemesis is something I should look into. I don't know. Un <laughs> unsatisfying answers with Hard Leg Joe. Um, what's the up? There we go. Now does that match the 45 degree angle I want? Not entirely, but it doesn't not match it. There we go. Does that match it? Uh, kind of. Not entirely. Uh, 0 
Sometimes you just gotta experiment. That's too much. Yep, that looks the most... That looks the most like the most. And then we just gotta lift it up. Perfect dish. I mean, there's a little gap, but who will notice? Not you. You guys don't say anything. If, I, if this episode comes out, uh, where, where me and Steve play this, and you guys are just nothing but like... Oh, did you notice that tiny little little piece of uh, scenery that was off? I I gotta watch about about. I'm gonna I'm gonna be angry. I don't know what I'll do. Probably nothing, but I'll be angry. <laughs> so you can look forward to that. Okay, and then this I need to make it just like negative point six. Said this Peru. It flips it around, and then I gotta flip it around. There we go. Um, let's see here. Why is someone asking about a specific... A specific person on the Discord? I'm not sure if they'd want me to tell about their situation in, in there. I'll, I'll just message them afterwards. I didn't... I didn't pre-screen them. That's an odd Q&A thing to ask. <laughs> Could've just asked me about that regularly. Um, let's see. What's your favorite comfort food to make your, for yourself in these trying times? All, all my foods are comfort foods. I'm kind of a weird, like, picky eater. So, I don't eat foods unless I, like, enjoy them. But, like, pizza, uh, fried chicken, bacon of some kind. I put bacon on pretty much everything. Anything that can have bacon in it or on it. I do. <laughs> uh, snow cones. I really like snow cones. I'm not sure if those count as food, but like tiger blood snow cones. Oh my god, you guys. You guys. Tiger blood. It's so good. There needs to be a tiger blood soda. I say this every time and no one ever does anything about it. Probably because I'm saying on this, this tiny, tiny Let's Play channel that not many people watch. At the moment, who knows, maybe I'll take off suddenly for unadequately explained reasons. Okay. Slide that down. Just making sure. And then I gotta do the same for this one. Yep, and I'm already past my time limit, but I got a couple more questions. I don't think I have enough for a second episode, so... This will be a one-off thing. Let me know if you liked it, though. Maybe I could do more of these more often. I want to try to get through some of these questions. What is the ideal cup size? Never mind. I don't want to get through any of these questions. Um, I don't know. Whatever. I don't, I'm not too picky. Uh, I don't know. Once you get too big, though, then you start having, like, back problems. I have a friend who is, like in her 20s and already starting to have back problems because just breasts too big <laughs> so i don't know maybe maybe try to keep it fairly reasonable as, as if you had a choice in the matter but i would i would never shame someone no matter what their size people could be beautiful whatever they could be really sexy it's more in how you act than what you look like at least to me I'd rather have someone who can be, who could like act really sexy than someone who like looks a particular way. But then again, I'm kind of a weirdo, I guess, in that regard. Um, should they make Vylon Isosahedron? Sure, why not? The Yu-Gi-Oh, the space for making Yu-Gi-Oh cards is infinite. Do whatever you feel like, man. If you think you can put an Isosahedron in there, you, you just have yourself a fine day. Uh, that was Yale, by the way. Gwen was the one who asked about cup size. Gwen. Wall Shadow. Is there a game that you never got to play that you wish you had a chance to, but never got to? Uh, that's weird phrasing because never got to kind of feels like I'll never have the chance to do it. And it's like, at this point, I don't think there's... It's like, I could always, I could always play more. I can always play games later in my life. Like, it's not like I've lost the ability to play games, and now I'll never be able to do them ever again. 
There are a lot of games that, like, I want to play and don't have time to, but I'm hoping I can get to them eventually. You know? Um... Hugs when? Whenever I, whenever I do an in-person event, whenever that is, eventually, I'll give hugs if people want hugs, assuming the coronavirus is over. That was Hot Red Elven Archfiend. Uh, Bacon for Broly. Is there an archetype you'd like to have more modern support? Uh, Metaphys. I was talking about this earlier with someone. I was like, yeah, that's like one of my favorite decks and it just hasn't gotten support in a while and it's kind of outdated. I'd like to see them get a couple more cards. Maybe some more spell traps, maybe another pendulum so they could become like an actual, like legit pendulum deck. That would be neat, maybe. Um, oh, are we getting some clipping here? Thought I saw some clipping, son. You best not be clipping. All right. Yeah, that artifacts too would be nice. If artifacts got like the ability to like work, <laughs> that would be that would be cool. As it stands, you can't really play a pure artifact deck anymore. I mean, even when you could, it wasn't that great. They're they're pretty much. But I, I'd like to be able to use the artifacts other than Lancia, Scythe, Morale Tech, and the trap that summons them from the deck. It'd be nice to actually be able to like summon Durindal in in the archetype or use their link in the archetype, etc. Um, okay. We've got to unsnap for that. Uh, let's see here. Is speed life? No. Life, there's more to life than speed. If you're not first, you're last. I think that's a, that's a reference to something. Something I don't know, though. Um, thanks, King Zirmus. Uh, Che, eat the rat? No, don't eat the rat. Not unless you're starving, or the rat's, like, particularly delicious, but most do not look delicious. Barst, is there any video you were initially excited about but had to cut for some reason? I did, I did a repeat of the, the, the same thing that I did with Rada and Jimbles last year for Christmas. The, like, draw five, uh, every turn, and, like, thousand life points or whatever. And we did it, and it just didn't... It, I didn't do it with Jimbles and them. I did it with some patrons, some regular co-hosts. Uh, and it just turned out really badly. And so we didn't get to do it. But other than that, no, I usually... My my standards are pretty low. I'm, I'm from the fast food thing of content, where it's like, you just gotta get out. You just gotta, you know... If you try to be perfect for too long, you'll never accomplish anything. You just kind of have to put stuff out, and if it's not good, then you'll get them on the next one. Just try to slowly improve. Better to have mediocre content than nothing at all. And obviously that doesn't work for everyone. Um, you know, the, the ecosystem of creators needs different kinds of people, though. Like, not everyone... I think if I don't think everyone can, can be the kind of person who puts out one video every six months. I think if all of YouTube was like that, it would be really stale. We wouldn't have enough, like, creators and stuff like that. Someone needs to put out, like, the fast food of content. And some people needs to make the high-quality desserts. You know what I'm saying? Or, like, the high-quality, like... Some people are chefs, some people are cooks. <laughs> I am a cook. I know that. I'm still working on chefing something up. Got that Legend of Lefty and 55 Lives and a couple other different projects that I'm working on, but unfortunately being a cook takes so much of my time that I can't, I don't get around to those. Not as fast as I would like, but someday. Someday, hopefully. Uh, let's see, Hunts asked, how is my day going? All right. I think I already kind of talked about that. Mr. Eus, if you take one card from the ban list and replace it, I'd, I'd have to open the ban list and I've already got like this open and that open. I don't know. I don't really like theorize about the ban list all that much. Hey, now look at that. We got all these blocks and everything. It's pretty neat. Neat out of 10, I'd rate it a neat. I would be super neat, super neat. He's super neato now. Can't touch this. Um, let's see. 
But yeah, so I, 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 you'd have to ask me that on like a Yu-Gi-Oh stream where I could just pull it up and like look over everything. But I don't put like independent thought and I don't know enough about the, the or I don't give it thought on my spare time. And I don't know the ban list enough by heart to know like what's off. There's nothing at the moment that like screams that it needs to be let off the ban list. There's no like Stratos that I'm like absolutely, please, this must be free. It's just sort of like, there's a bunch of regular stuff. So it is written, so it shall be. And let's see here. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Chaos Bug, what archetype do you personally find the most disappointing? Uh, fuck. I know there's an answer to this one, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. There's been archetypes that, like, I've played... There, I know there's some archetype that I played and it was, like... At least recently, I'd have to actually say Rose Dragons. Where it's, like, they... They they have some neat tricks. They have a, they have a theme. They have some support. It seems like Konami wants them to do something very specific, which is, like, nuke the field over and over again and then summon Black Rose Dragon and actually use its effect. But the, the archetype feels, like, incomplete. I mean, you'll hear my thoughts by... by the, there'll be a DBC with Rose Dragons in it. You can hear me talk about why they're such a disappointing archetype. But they were never, like, intended to be a complete archetype. They're just, like, translating things from the anime, if I'm not mistaken. Oop, perspective. Done it to me again. the heck is okay it's just yeah tubes in walls walls in tubes uh how do you go about your deck building that's a long and involved question i plan to make a video about that at some point about like what my process is or how to build for online or how to build casually you can also see that if you come to twitch i often uh build decks on on camera although that's usually an exercise in frustration and annoyance because i'm trying to like explain my method and meanwhile people are like you're playing a dark monster play a lure of darkness or they'll be like oh you've got one warrior add in rota and i'm like okay i will add rota at some point but i'm right now i like i usually start with like the the, the main uh, win condition and then work backwards from there you eventually get the consistency cards after you make sure you have everything you need to like make the deck win i think it's a flaw to start out being like okay i have this and then instantly add in all this stuff that's why a lot of other deck builders their, their decks t tend to have like the same five hand traps or the same five like tech cards because they just start out and they're like this is what i know i need and here's a bunch of hand traps that I know I need, and then they fill in the rest. Which has its pros and cons, depending on what you're going for. Oh, let's see. Yada yada. I'm trying to see if there's any other... <laughs> Most of these other ones are like, can I be the official Discord mom? Am I the king of the Patreon hangout? No one has actual questions. They're just being, they're just being goofy. I don't even I don't even know what that that word is. I'm not gonna put I'm not gonna say it. It sound it sounds it sounds lewd. I'm not gonna say it. Um, where do squirrels go during hurricanes? Are you cuckoo for cocoa puffs? Uh, oh okay. There's one more at the bottom here, which I'll answer as I as I get this, which is uh, what games would you like to try in the future? Because I do want to mention there's a with the uh, what you call it. Metal Gear Solid, I'm planning to play that on Legs Play sometime here in the near future. So you can look forward to that being started. Um, I'd also like to play Metal Chaos Wolf, which is a very weird game made by FromSoft. I've only seen parts of it, but it looks like it would be amazing. Uh, I still want to play Dead Space at some point and get my, like initial reaction because i've never actually played it and don't know where the jump scares are and stuff and that's supposed to be like a classic horror-ish game that then got ruined 
by sequels. Yay. And uh, Disco Elysium, I really want to play that, but I feel like the only way I could do it justice would be like, if we had four people here all doing like voice acting and such, and I'm not sure how reasonable that is given that everyone has their own schedules and everything. Yeah, we'll go ahead, you just save. Oh yeah, final tutorial, course settings. You could change the holes and everything. If somehow you, you were looking for a tutorial and, and saved the whole way. There are better, there are better tutorials than me, but I hopefully gave the basics for, for what you want to know. There, find out the rest. Yeah, there, there's a lot of games I have. There's a reason I haven't retired the uh, the legs plays quite yet. There's still some stuff I'd like to do. Just haven't gotten around to it. Who knows if we ever will. But either way, it's been fun. It's been a fun evening. Fun hour. More than an hour. Hopefully you enjoyed this little thing. Let me know if you'd like to see more building tutorial Q&A streams. Maybe just one of those. And until next time... You know, do your thing. <laughs>